Uh, hello guys, uh, my name is Gerald Musara. Yeah, I call myself the pigpreneur uh, because I specialize in training people or showing people how entrepreneurship can be incorporated in pig farming. In other words, I'm simply saying I teach people on how to manage a piggery unit as a business. As you all know, business is a game of numbers. So it's all about manipulating those numbers so that you can enjoy a better profit margin. So for those who are seeing this face for the first time, I think you now know who I am. Uh, if you are new to this channel or it's your first time to see these kinds of videos, may you please uh, take your time to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's called uh, Pogzim, P-O-R-C-Zim, uh, where we talk everything pig farming. So we are currently running a series uh, of videos on feeds where we are trying to make people understand the whole dynamics involved in feeds and the feeding regimes. We were talking about the nutritional balances that are required in every feed. We are also talking of how to feed uh, your pigs aiming for a meaningful or a very convincing growth rate. So these are some of the things that we are focusing on uh, this past month. So I know a lot of people were mainly waiting for me to give them the feed formulations or the feed ratios. And I decided not to do so. Why? Because I believe people have to understand first what it is uh, we call the right feeds or how you should feed before you know the nitty gritties of the formulations or the ratios that I'm going to talk about. So today, that is the day we're going to talk about uh, feed formulations in the feed ratios. So the first thing I want people to understand is that there are basically five or so meals that uh, we have in pig farming. We've got our creep meal, which is basically the starter meal. We've got the winner meal. We've got a grower meal. Then we've got our lactating for those nursing mothers. Then we've got uh, bow and sow. Then we've got finisher to make it six meals that uh, we deal with. So I'm going to give you uh, the relevant or the specific ratios that are associated with each uh, stage of growth of our pigs. So the first thing people need to understand is where to feed these kinds of meals. So I wrote a few things here just to guide me so that we don't get lost along the way. So creep meal, you feed it from day six up to 18 kgs of live weight. So you introduce your creep feed day six after birth, then you keep feeding that creep meal even after winning for uh, at least 18 kgs. In my previous video, I said you should not win uh, according to age, but you should win according to weight. That is the best way you can minimize post-winning mortality. So this is just a continuation uh, of the information that I gave in the previous video. So you can see the, that the videos are interrelated. So that is it, 18 kgs then, you have to change it to winner meal. The best way uh, to get the results uh, from our winner meal is to feed it from uh, 20 to 35 kgs. Once your pigs reach 20 to 35 kgs, then it's about time you feed them a uh, winner meal. In terms of weeks, uh, that should be around 6 to 11 weeks of age. Then in terms of grower meal, when your pigs reach 35 kgs to 60 or 65 kgs, that will be about 12 weeks to 16 weeks. Then you should be giving them what we call a grower meal. Then the finisher meal, uh, the last meal for all our fattening pigs. Uh, you should give finisher meal to pigs which are weighing at least 60 kgs to 115 kgs live weight. That will be around 17 weeks to 22 weeks. So now that we've got a guide, I think it's the right time to go into detail about uh, these meals. So there's one thing that I forgot to mention uh, in my introductory part. We use uh, two different uh, feed formulation ratios. Why? It's emanating from the experience that I have had. That's number one. Then number two, it's also emanating from the kind of breeds that we have 
encountered in the whole of Zimbabwe. So if you're watching this video outside of Zimbabwe, I don't know the, the level of superiority of the breeds that you have there, but this information is based on the breeds that are here in Zimbabwe. So the first group uh, of uh, feeding or mixing ratios that I'm going to give you is going to focus on our classic breeds. These are our Jorox, our Dalans, our Land Races, our Large Whites, ETC. So in Zimbabwe, uh, there is actually a scarce of pure breeds. Let me be honest with you. The breeds that we have here have been crossed and crossed to the extent that uh, you can only find pedigrees and they are quite rare again. So the majority of the breeds in Zimbabwe, even those from PIB, they are now, I can't say weaker breeds, but they are no longer superior breeds. So that alone is shifted uh, the feed conversion ratios of those pigs and that also is negatively affected the growth rates of those pigs So if you compare the growth rates of pure breeds and those breeds that we call pure breeds in Zimbabwe with other nations You can see that there is a very big difference which uh, Forces me to say that we no longer have those superior breeds when it comes to classic breeds in Zimbabwe Then the second uh, group of ratios that I'm going to give you is going to focus on improving Improved breeds. These are our Dunraces, our TNZs, these are our GN80s. These are improved breeds that have been uh, crossed uh, with the regards or with the focus on growth rate. So they have got their weaknesses. That is a video for another day. But for today, we are just going to focus on improved breeds and a ratio for our classic breeds. So the first thing we need to talk about. Um, is related to classic breeds so the meal that i'm going to talk about here let's start with uh creep as you can see from the chart that i have put on the screen uh it's a roughly 66 percent energy and the reason why we didn't put mixed brand is because we want them to enjoy all those kilojoules that are provided uh in maize not maize brand you see then if you look at the ratio it's a 23 percent soya meal why we are trying to push for growth and that high energy value of 66 percent that is the most active stage of a pig we wanted to have more energy for metabolism and we also wanted to have more proteins for growth then we need to put about 11 percent our bone meal bone meal is rich in calcium phosphorus which is good for bone development so in other words it's all just about pushing uh, the growth rates of our pigs then these three parts now the last three parts that's where we differ a lot uh, from the custom ratios or the feed formulation formulas that you have in the market. We add minerals. This is where we put in uh, our multivitamin block. Sometimes we use uh, the winter block that is normally associated with cows and sheep, but we discover that it works in Zimbabwe. Then we also need to, to put uh, what we call pig boost. Pig boost uh, just uh, gives our piglets a chance to gain a little more than the average. Uh, like I said earlier, the breeds that we have in Zimbabwe are no longer superior. So what we are doing is that we are only increasing a chance of the pigs to go close to the standard that is expected of a breed. Then in terms of premixes, you are free to use any premix of your choice. Why? Because we just want zinc and phosphorus uh, in those uh, premixes. So Chances are so high that you are not going to abide to the uh, formulations or the rations that uh, is written on their packages. We just want one or two elements in their premixes. So this is the first part where creep is 66% uh, energy. So you just have to continuously be reminded that these ratios are being created for breeds which are considered not to be that superior that's why you see we've gone uh, beyond the 18 uh, percent uh, soya that is required in terms of um, uh, the creep feed ours is 23 percent why we are giving our piglets an extra boost you see then let's take a look at the grower feed it's now 60 percent energy uh now it has got um 
140 uh, kgs of mixed bran the ratio of mixed bran i'm going to give you at the end of the video this is where we also differ with the rest of uh, feed manufacturing uh, formulas that are there in the market uh, the idea is in those mixed bran that's where we add our appetizers that's where we add our sorghum that's where we add our breadcrumbs that's where we also add our ground nuts brand uh, just to give our feed that extra taste and that extra smell the idea is to encourage our pigs to eat more once they eat more they convert more energy uh, which gives us more growth rate I think it's clear there then you also need to take a look um, at our finish uh, chart it's now 690 kgs of maize, 180 kgs of mixed bran. Then our soya, uh, we now reduce the soya to 13%, from 17% to 13%. Why? We want to reduce the big fat of our pigs so that when we send our, our pokers to the market, they are classified as uh, commercial super pokers. So once you, your pigs have got that thick layer of fat, your pigs are no longer super pokers, but they are now uh, considered as baconers. Then let's take a look uh, at lactating. Lactating is one of the critical feeds that I want to place more emphasis on why because uh, our pigs are nursing you see the pig has got to have that level of energy to produce more milk for the piglets and more energy to save itself so we stick uh, to 66 percent energy when it comes to lactating meal then in terms of soya we maintain 13 percent uh, crude protein why because we don't want our lactating mothers to be fed once they become fed it restricts milk production which negatively affects uh, the growth rate uh, of our piglets before we win them so it will be very dangerous for you to win weaker piglets you know the high rate of post winning mortality you can't control it then we need to look also at uh, our boy and sow our Boy and sow generally it has to be 800 um, kgs energy or 80% energy. But in this regard, we use uh, 720 kg, which translates to 72% uh, maize and 190 mixed bran. Mixed bran consists of uh, all those carbohydrates and fibers, but that's where we add our appetizers, as I said earlier. Uh, then, in terms of soya, it has to be 9% soya. We want them to remain fit not uh, obese once your pigs become obese they now produce a small liter once your pigs are producing a small liter then the sustainability uh, of your project becomes questionable so the idea is to keep the sows fit so that uh, their uterus remains free of fat so that they may give us uh, a huge liter um, basically those are the meals uh, that we need to focus on when it comes to our classic breeds. The reason why I didn't give uh, the formulation for winner meal is because since we already uh, we are already using 23 percent of crude protein in our crib we can continue with that feed up to 20 kgs of weight then we translate uh, we take that transition to grow a meal so the feeds are already high in soya which means they are already high in crude protein they are already high in fat levels so there is no need if you have uh, those classic breeds to take that transition from crib meal to winner meal but you can straightly uh, transition from crib meal to grower meal okay so now let's take a look at uh, the feed formulas for the improved breeds. Uh, what I want you to notice is the difference in terms of uh, soya meal consumption. Soya is the most expensive ingredient of our feeds. So the moment you cut on that and maintain your steady growth rate, then you are good to go. I'm not saying you should all go for improved breeds, but I'm just showing you something. Okay, let's look at the Crifid. The Crifid is 800%. Uh, it's 800 kgs, not percent, sorry. It's 800 kgs uh, maize. 
Then soya, it's a 68 uh, kgs, which, which is around 6.8 uh, kgs of soya. If you compare it against the 23 percent of soya, there is a vast big difference there. Then we look at uh, mixed bran, which is uh, 10 percent, which translates to 100 kgs. Then our minerals, uh, it's 10 kgs. Then our premixes, then it's 22 kgs. Okay, what I want you to understand here is that these are uh, improved breeds they were created with a specific focus on a growth rate so if you give them the classic uh feed uh the classic uh formulation for the feeds that we did for our classic breeds chances are so high that they are going to be obese and once the piglets become obese they suffer from cardiac arrest or they suffer from shock so you shouldn't be tempted at whatever capacity to feed 23% uh, of soya to improve the breeds. Stick to 6.8 or you should not go beyond 10% uh, of soya. Uh, that way you are safer. But in terms of growth rate now, we'll talk about that uh, in the later stage where we'll be doing uh, effect by effect comparison of these two feed formulation uh, ratios. Okay, now let's look at uh, grower. Grower here. Uh, is 750 uh, kgs of maize, then it's 100 kgs of soya, which translates to 10%. Then we now use bone meal on a grower, which is 6% or 60 kgs. Then mix the bran again, where we put our appetizers and stuff. It's now 6%, which translates to 60 kgs. Then minerals, they remain the same. Then in terms of premixes, now we want 20%. Okay. Let me do a brief explanation on why we have now put uh, bone meal uh, at this stage. On creep meal, the piglets are mainly relying on the nutrients that are being provided by the mother. The pigs can actually survive on milk alone uh, for the first eight weeks without any input of, of creep feed. So all those calcium phosphorus that you want are there in the mother's milk. Now the focus now is to create a nutritionally balanced lactating meal which we'll talk about uh, later on so once we win those piglets they are now transitioning to grow a meal they are now uh, expected to survive on their own or to create those nutrients for themselves to grow so we now aid them by putting bone meal which is calcium phosphorus uh, in nature to boost them with their natural growth mind you at a grower stage the piglet is that ability to gain one kg on a daily basis even a maximum of two kgs for these are uh, improved breeds so we are now substituting milk uh, which was providing that calcium phosphorus for our, for our piglets or our winners with bone meal which is now an added advantage to them let's look at finisher finisher is 800 percent uh it's 800 kgs uh maize which translates to 80 percent energy just like uh, the same concept on our classic breeds we don't want uh, a too much back fat what we want is lean meat what we want is uh, weights that are not uh, covered in by uh, by these feeds so we cut on soya meal we cut it to 6.8 percent you see then we maintain our mixed bran uh, at 100 kgs which is equivalent to 10 percent then nothing changes on our finisher let's take a look at uh, the lactating meal it has to be 75 percent uh, energy then it has to be 16 percent uh, crude protein or soya now if you look at it we have increased uh, our soya income levels in our improved breeds mothers why because we are forcing them to nest their piglets for more than 28 days that is a uh, one tricky part you need to understand uh, before you adopt uh, these feeds now let's take a look at our boy and sour meal it's 80 percent energy it's 6.8 uh, soya meal which translates to 68 kgs so the other part nothing changes so let's do a quick uh, comparative analysis of these two meals if you have classic breeds 
the traditional breeds that you have. In Zimbabwe, we have got an additional breed, uh, the Mukota, the, the local breed. Those breeds, they don't gain much. Chances are so low that that pig can gain 6 kgs per week. Chances are so low. So what we are doing now, we are just manipulating the feeds so that we may add a little bit of fat, a manageable fat instead uh, into those breeds so that they may gain a little bit of weight so that you can gain uh, meaningful weights for our markets. So a quick comparative analysis will show you that uh, the most expensive meal uh, like I always say, is grower meal because it consumes a lot of soya. Uh, if you look at it, here at the, our classic uh, feed formulation, we're sticking to 14% uh, soya meal. But in this instance, we have cut it to 10%. The same applies to lactating meal. Uh, the idea is to play around uh, with our soya meal. If you don't have soya meal, you can use a sunflower cake as a substitute. Uh, those two things can work. If you've got access to fish meal, then you like you, you can use that. But in Zimbabwe, it's quite expensive. So the information that I've provided in this video, you need to be very careful. Why? Because these two different feed formulas work based on two different kinds of breeds. The classic breeds you need to manipulate them so that they gain a little bit higher weights. Then with the improved breeds, you can't compromise on feeding them more soya. Why? Because they are made or they are manufactured to growth. So the moment you feed more soya into them or you feed more fats and more crude protein to them, you are actually killing them. They have got that ability to produce more fat than the classic breeds. And generally they grow big faster. So the idea is just to maintain that body frame and to maintain that steady growth rate. The only way you can calculate the actual feed conversion ratio of your pigs is to weigh your feed every day, then to weigh your pigs every week. Then you compare the growth rates against the feed intake charts that is the best way you can calculate your feed conversion ratio once you are sure about your feed conversion ratio for your specific uh, pigs then you are good to go you can play around with these uh, feed uh, ratios or formulas then see what works best for you but the moment you are doing that experiment make sure you change your feeds uh, on uh, a 14 days basis. Why? Because that is the best period where you can see any meaningful changes or any positive responses to the feed that you'll be giving them. But if you only have classic breeds in your pens, I suggest you move uh, to improve the breeds. Even if you look uh, at our mobile phones, they are gradually improving the operating system. Android used to be on Android 1.4. Now it's Android 14 or Android 15. Why? It's not just a change in name, but also in, in terms of performance. The same applies to pigs. You can't keep uh, keeping your traditional or your classic breeds when they don't gain much in the market. Mind you, the feed, feed cost is going high on a daily basis. So it is for your own advantage to improve your breeds so that you can go to the market early. With uh, improved breeds, you can go to the market at 16 weeks at 16 weeks, your pigs will be weighing around 65 to 75 kgs in terms of weight. But uh, when you compare that against our, our classic breeds, at uh, 16 weeks, those pigs will be weighing around 25 to 40 kgs. So you can go to the market with the mediocre weights. So that's what I'm trying to show you, Good guys. You should move. Uh, and accept that uh, as breeds improve, you also should improve your head so that you may enjoy this journey in the piggery business. So for any questions, guys, feel free uh, to get in touch uh, on my personal number uh, that is on the screen right now. Or you can uh, DM us on our Facebook page, which is Pogzim, P-O-R-C-Zim. Or you can actually join... Uh, 
our Facebook group. We have got three groups actually, so you can join any of those group, uh, three groups. Uh, I believe you can learn something from there because they are established producers there. They are those who are operating at the middle scale. Then they are jo those who are just beginning. So in the end, there is always room for everyone. So thank you guys for taking your time uh, to follow this feed series uh, and also to watch this video. May you please subscribe and remember to share with your family and friends. See you in the next video. Cheers.